right now, Eyewitness Sports. Good evening, I'm Brennan Miller with Eyewitness Sports. Earlier today, the Syracuse University men's basketball team made a surprise announcement, posting on social media the news of the dismissal of one of its contributing players from the team, junior forward Benny Williams. While Williams was yet to start a game this season, he had played an 18 coming off the bench for New Orange head coach Red Autry, averaging 5.4 points and 3.9 rebounds per game in 17 minutes. All three of those down ticks from last year's numbers of 7.2 and 4.1 in 22 minutes. There have been rumors of discontent within the program since Williams was suspended for two games at the beginning of this year, which were only exacerbated in the team's most recent loss against Wake Forest when he received a technical foul for throwing the ball into the crowd near the end of the game and after receiving that foul, then bumped into Coach Autry on his way to the bench. The team and school did not give a formal reason for Williams' dismissal, but he was expected to be a contributor to this year's Orange team in their pursuit of a return to the NCAA tournament. The crown of Jim Beheim's 2021 recruiting class with Autry serving as his primary recruiter and at the time the number 41 player in that 2021 class and a top 10 small forward. Tonight's big stories involve a pair of boys basketball games in the Tri-Valley League with stars aplenty. Three of the four teams we saw are ranked in New York State. The other one probably should be. So we start with the game that tipped off first. CVA going to play RFA, the Thunder, the number seven team in the class and then class A, while the Black Knights hold a 23rd spot in a vaunted class AAA. This one was just super close the entire time. Thunder lead by, led by All-State forward Deacon Judd. Hits the three from the left wing side, CVA up seven to four. They still led in the quarter, but good pass down low. DeAndre Neal to Luke Hammond. Our cameraman Landon described this as a mouse in the house. I don't really know what that means, but regardless, Thunder still lead. Then later in the half, Isaiah Grimes floater from the baseline hits, but CVA still rolling. That true RFA within seven, 21 to 14. By half though, the Black Knights had caught up. Grimes once again, this time way down range, ties things up at 40 all, and that's how we went to half. Judd was doing all he could for his team. A season high and career high, 42 points, including this and one that put them up 69-67. But this really young RFA squad stays in it. Neil Steel and finish puts them up by four, and that's how it ends. A 90 to 86 high scoring final ends with the Black Knights on top. They snap a two game skid with an impressive state ranked W. But the team that started that losing streak for RFA is one half of our other game. The Proctor Raiders hosting Camden, a Blue Devils team that is number 18 in Class A in New York State and has only lost to the two teams that we talked about previously, CBA and RFA. Playing up two classes, they held their own in the first, leading as late as 1918. But when the other team can do what you're about to see, it's probably going to be a long night. Quadier John slam on the assist from Jerkwell Henderson. John had a huge game tonight, both at the rim and from beyond the arc as well. 27 points, including three threes against RFA last time out. 25 tonight with the three here. Mike Breen just bang. That's the shot that ended a 25 to 12 third quarter. Proctor led by 20 after three. They were making the heads up plays too. Camden trying the classic throw it off the defender's legs trick to get possession. But Henderson makes the catch with his knees, turns around, goes up and under the defender for a beautiful lay-in. Absolutely gorgeous stuff. A 15 point victory for the Raiders over ranked Camden. I mentioned that the one team not ranked of the four that probably should be, that's them, wins over both RFA and CVA, actually two of them over the Black Knights. And of their four losses, Three have been against teams that are ranked in the most recent edition of the New York State Sports Writers Association Boys Basketball Poll. Three have been either on the road or at a neutral site, and two of them are against the West Genesee Wildcats, the number eight team in the state in Class AA, and the defending Class AA sectional runner-up when that class was the largest in the state last year. So, there's something to think about. They grab ranked win number five tonight. And finally, all season long, NFL refs have come under sometimes sharp criticism for some calls in NFL games. Wearing the stripes on the field, not an easy thing, and attracting good candidates is even tougher than working the games. But Pro Football is expanding that candidate pool. There are now nine female officials on the field on Sundays. Kat Conti is one of them, and Brenna Green has her story. I started officiating 24 years ago, yes. Uh, I started at four years old. Kat Conti's journey in refereeing began with a realization. She loved football, so why not have the best seat in the house on the chain gang? That idea was quickly shot down by a local football coach, or so she thought. 
And he said, um, a lot of them are retired officials. And I was like, oh, oh, well. And immediately I was like, oh, well, there, there goes that idea. And, and his next sentence was, so why don't you do that? And I literally remember laughing out loud. But through that laughter, something stuck. She ended up attending an orientation meeting for high school officials and never looked back, even if she looked different. And he stops and he looks at me and he says, um, you know, this is football officiating. And I said, yeah. And he said, contact sport. I said, yeah. He's like, not volleyball. I said, uh-huh. He was like, okay. So <laughs> just wanted to make sure I was in the right place. That would be the first, but not the last time, Kat or any of her other female counterparts for that matter would be under a microscope because of their gender. You just have to accept it and say, hey, this is, this is part of the journey. And the journey is we're going to be scrutinized more. We have to be good, we have to be better, and that's okay. Kat says there are far more inspiring moments, though, that outweigh the weight of those expectations. I've had a coach who has been obviously coaching for probably 50 years, right, pull me aside in a pregame situation and shake my hand and look me in the eye and say, I am really proud that you're here, and I've got daughters, and I've got granddaughters. There's, there's enough of that that you go, okay, this matters. So that's just one of the stories that we're going to be covering leading up to the big game this weekend. Yep. 49ers and Chiefs getting ready to go at it. That was a story yesterday. They were both in Las Vegas mm -hmm. getting ready to go despite the weather that Craig had talked about yeah. earlier out west and some of that flash flooding. But uh, they did their introductions last night. All working up to Sunday. All right, sounds good. Thanks, Brennan. Yep. Coming up next after the break, with February being Heart Health Month, we'll bring you important CPR tips that could save a life.